Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we would like to talk to you about a campaign we've discovered targeting multiple countries in the uh, Asian region. Uh, so my name is Igor Morgenstern, and I work as a malware researcher for Avast. And this is my colleague, uh, Lugino Kamastra. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, and I also work as a malware researcher at Avast, uh, mostly hunting APTs and reverse engineering malicious files. And uh, also, there was uh, one colleague with us, Jan Holman. He's also a malware researcher. So okay, I'd like to help. Uh, oh, thank thanks, you thank well. him as well. Okay, let's see how it all started. <clears throat> so, uh, while hunting for uh, samples from a different campaign, we came across this binary, which was logdll. So, uh, an attacker abused uh, side loading to load this DLL. This uh, binary had really low detection rate at uh, that time. Most of the victims uh, were in Taiwan, and according to some uh, additional uh, telemetry that we had, uh, they were most likely related to online gambling industry. And this industry is known to be targeted by Chinese APT groups, so we thought that uh, it can be an interesting uh, for further, further investigation. So let's uh, try to explore the timeline from discovering this DLL uh, backwards till we finally find the infection vector and are able to build the entire uh, infection chain. Okay, so the, we are going to start with the stage three, which is our log DLL. <clears throat> we call it uh, Corex. As I've mentioned, uh, they used side loading. Uh, uh, so the payloads are encrypted and stored uh, in resources with AES-256. Oh. The decryption parameters are also stored in the uh, resource as uh, key hash IV, uh, as a uh, white string. When executed, this uh, stage is checking, checking for this process presenting on the system, uh, which is the ASET uh, service process. If they find this process, they uh, remap anti-DLL to bypass the hooking. After that, they execute the shell code and load the next stage. Some uh, interesting technique that they used in shell code was that they enumerated exports of anti-DLL and built an array with hashes of these names uh, of uh, ZW functions, which are basically the syscalls. Then they uh, sorted this array by RVA, and by doing so, they exploited the fact that the order of RVAs of ZW functions is uh, equals to the order of corresponding syscalls. So an index in this array is uh, basically a syscall, which can be called directly with the syscall instruction. Uh, by doing so, you can uh, bypass some security uh, products based on hooking API in user space. Okay, let's recap uh, stage two. Uh, in this stage, they used uh, comp session moniker for privilege escalation on the system. Uh, binaries are also stored in the resources. They are encrypted with the AES-256. Uh, IV is hard-coded in the binary and the decryption key is derived from hashing multiple bytes in the resource at the offset of eights. Uh, after that, this stage is uh, executed the next, next one. Here is a summary of um, multiple uh, resources we've uh, seen uh, on this stage, from this stage. Uh, they, they have multiple types of resources, uh, multiple types of payloads, as, uh, for instance, uh, different configuration files, list of CNCs, uh, some helper DLLs for USC bypass. They also had the next stage, which was the log DLL and the PE, which is uh, meant to uh, sideload this uh, log DLL. Okay, so now we are at stage one, which uh, consists of two parts. 
the, the main executable was uh, this um, setup CN, that the whole uh, binary name was mimicking a, a name of a setup of uh, WPS office, and we are going to explain why. Um, Okay, so this stage also was uh, abusing uh, side loading. So to access uh, the current, uh, current user hive uh, of the uh, user logged in on the system, they impersonated a uh, uh, token of Explorer and uh, used uh, reg override uh, a Windows API. After that, uh, they constructed uh, JavaScript code with some hard-coded values. As you can see, it was a server, which is uh, the just CNC and the key for decryption. Uh, rest of the script is retrieved during the execution from the server. And unfortunately, we, don't have, we do not have it because uh, the server was not uh, available during the time of the investigation. But from the telemetry, we could, uh, we can say that uh, the script was just downloading the next stage, decrypting it and executing it. Okay, let's recap. Here are our three stages and let's take a look at the infection vector. So we could see that the first stage was dropped by WPS update process, which is the uh, update uh, process of uh, WPS Office, which is the um, office uh, developed by Kingsoft. Uh, this payload was downloaded from uh, official domain, which was uh, update.wpscn, but it was uh, served from this IP, which, uh, which is located in Japan and has uh, no relation to the Kingsoft company itself which was uh, pretty weird. And we had a few ideas on how to explain that. So first we thought that this might be a DNS spoofing or uh, they might have compromised the infrastructure of Kingsoft themselves. But we could eliminate uh, these uh, theories uh, by checking some additional information. And other idea that we had was the vulnerability in this uh, update process itself and we decided to check this. So we had multiple objectives. Uh, so we have to be able to download executable from an arbitrary location. Uh, the, this process should look legitimate and uh, we should be able then to execute the, this binary on the system. And luckily we could do that. So we had to uh, update just single single registry value on the, the machine. And this uh, value is under current user hive, so it does not require any additional privileges. By doing so, we also get persistence on the system because every time uh, update process is going to be executed, it's going to talk to our malicious server. Uh, and all our malicious uh, binaries that are going to be down downloaded are going to be executed by WPS, uh, legitimate signed uh, process. <clears throat> Here is a just quick demo. On the left, you can see uh, the um, screen of uh, the victim. And on the right, it uh, just uh, emulates the attacker server. And uh, in this case, I. Um, invoke the update process manually, but uh, you don't have to do that because it's going to be uh, um, invoked uh, automatically through the uh, schedule task on the system. Uh, then at this point, we already had uh, like full chain from infection vector throughout all the stages, but we had uh, multiple binaries from the stage one for which we did not have the infection vector. And we decided to talk to Team T5, which is a security company based in Taiwan um, for other possible IVs. And they had another 
IV actually for when an attacker sent uh, email with the uh, infected uh, infected uh, installer to the support team of the targeted company, uh, just asking them to check for a bug in their so software. So this way they compromise the uh, the network. Here are just a few examples of. Uh, these uh, infected installers. Okay, so the next uh, stage is going to be handled by, by my colleague. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to Igor, uh, describe the whole kill chain uh, from two different infection vector to car, car X. That is going to drop another stage in the memory and this stage uh, we call Proto-8. Uh, Proto-8 is quite robust as a modular DLL written in C++ and in the first phase it's checking if that was loaded by the right executable and then it starts setting up some basic environment for the right functionality such as malware's walking directory may load some configuration files also may update itself but if that is necessary. Uh, Proto-8 is responsible for loading plugins that are extends the Proto 8's functionality. Uh, those plugins may be obtained from a Chinese uh, cloud storage service, and the, to access this storage, you need to have the Proto 8 needs to have uh, uh, credentials which are hard coded within uh, within the binaries. So one of the things why I described it robust and modular. Um, is that it may choose one of the different communication functionality for the communication with the CNC server. And this decision is made by the configuration file dropped by ICBC log. As you can see uh, on the slides, there are nine different uh, strings you might find in the configuration file. Uh, Proto 8 may also receive a uh, command from a CNC server and one of uh, those functions is uh, update uh, is configuration file uh, that holds the IP, IP address of a CNC server uh, and one of the nine strings that were uh, in the SM cache data. So these strings, this string that are uh, in the SM cache data is going to really describe like which function going to use for the communication with the CNC server. May also receive a plugin. Those plug this plugin can be loaded and dropped. Uh, also, it may impersonate the token from uh, the Explorer. And uh, we, we found uh, that some functions are not yet implemented. So that we make a kind of we, we, were, we are assuming that the binary is actively being developed by, uh, by the attacker. So far, we found uh, four different plugins. Uh, one of them uh, is a core plugin uh, that loads the rest uh, of uh, three plugins, and each of them co corresponds with different functionality, such as achieving persistence, bypassing UAC, registering uh, an RPC interface, creating a new account, and one of those plugins has uh, bigger capabilities. Well, we will now talk about the first plugin, uh, core plugin. Uh, this plugin is loaded by uh, Proto8 uh, to uh, manage you know, additional plugins. So it may load plugin, remove a plugin, and also, it may uh, find the information about the plugin location and this information uh, sent to uh, CNC server. Uh, the, the main purpose uh, of this make game is it executing the, is it, is it executes a legitimate binary that loads a core X loader and that loads a Proto8 uh, in, the, in the memory. Uh, we found that it was also registering IPC interface that corresponds with the functionality to decode and execute a, a shellcode. 
uh, Zillot is doing two things. The first one is uh, setting up uh, the persistence. And uh, the second one, it creates an easy access uh, to the infected machine. Now we'll talk about the setting up the persistence. Uh, this is done by two methods. Uh, one of them is uh, it can register itself uh, into the list of security support providers. And the second one, um, it's setting up the make game path uh, to the register key. So um, to make game will be loaded each time when WinSock library uh, is invoked. And also it has this capability to uh, bypass a USC mechanism, mechanism with a specific uh, com, in, or com interface. After setting up the persistence, uh, the next step was uh, creating a, an account. Uh, then afterwards, it's, it lowers the system protection uh, by uh, registry manipulation, as you, as you can see on the slide. On the slide. Uh, we will go step by step. Uh, so in the first one, um, it is used to disable a UAC, UAC remote destruction. Then uh, it also allows to disable a UAC mechanism for a built-in administration account. Then uh, it enables a empty password on network. Also, uh, Anonymous SID is going to be in everyone uh, Windows group, and uh, and this also setting up that it allows the anonymous user uh, to list all account names and enumerates all sh shared resources. And the last one, it allows a new session user to access uh, name pipes. Now we're going to talk about the Malcolm. Uh, that's a fully fledged backdoor. Uh, it, it may receive a command to upload and download files, may do some basic uh, file operations, may create a process. Uh, also, it can collect, uh, inf uh, I mean, it can enumerate the root disks. Also, may collect some uh, file, uh, information about uh, files and gather some basic information about uh, inf infected machine. Uh, Mulcom can communicate uh, with uh, two protocols, uh, the HTTP and TCP. Uh, and this uh, communication with the CNC server is compressed and encrypted. And uh, it also has this functionality when, if it finds out that um, there is a proxy server in the network, it has this functionality to may authenticate uh, with the proxy server. That was our analysis, uh, technical analysis of the binaries. Now we are going to talk about the uh, victims. So far we found uh, victims that are mostly located uh, in Asia. More specifically, we found uh, for dissidents in China. Uh, also, we found uh, from out elementary gambling companies in Taiwan, government institutions and railways, uh, gambling company in Philippines, uh, telecom uh, telco companies in Kazakhstan, and dissidents uh, located in Hong Kong. Everyone is trying to do the attribution, but I was really scared so I, of it. So I, I'm going to share with you just what, what we found and what we think it's, it's important to say. We found code similarities between uh, Molcom and FFRED, mostly in the implementation of uh, proxy, proxy authentication. And afterwards, we found uh, also code similarities between FFRAT and WinNTI sample. And in this case, we found uh, same debug strings and overall the implementation 
was very similar. We also are, we are sharing the, the hashes. Uh, so you can see by yourself as well. I also uh, did some IDA screenshots uh, on the left. Uh, you can see uh, implementation of, a, to, of, of proxy authentication that's from Mulcom and from the right and the right uh, that uh, is from uh, FF Red. Okay, that was it. We will wrap things up. We discovered a campaign targeting uh, gambling companies and uh, dissidents. We discovered uh, vulnerability in the VPS uh, update. Uh, the bad actors, uh, we think that they um, infiltrate in the network uh, with infected installer or uh, possible thanks to vulnerability in the VPS update. Uh, we, in the, infected, in, in the infected network, we observed various droppers and loaders in Macdoor, and there was a notable code similarities between uh, FFRAT and Mulcom. And thanks to this, we, we, there is a, <clears throat> we think that there is a high possibility of code sharing among these uh, Chinese threat groups. And that was it for us. I thank you for your attention. So, any questions? Yes, over there. Hold on, the mic is coming. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your talk, excellent. Um, I know you were very careful with attribution, uh, but I'm asking you to be a bit not careful. Uh, did you see any, any overlaps between groups that you currently track and, and this threat actor? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the last two words to be sure? Did you see any code overlaps or any, um, any IOC or TTP overlaps between this particular threat actor and one that you currently track? Uh, no, yet. That's, <laughs> I mean, we are tracking this group for, for, for some quite time and uh, there is some speculation, like which group it may be, but I don't have hundred. I'm not hundred percent sure, and so I'm rather to not attribute it yet and wait for more data than telling you something that is not exactly accurate. Okay, there is some other question over there. Yeah, just um, probably I missed it during the the talk, but. Did you, it, it was the, the vulnerability in that component that made them being able to change the uh, final IP with that domain that should not be uh, translated into that IP. I mean, the, the updater thing, you remember that it have a, a, a legit domain but it was pointing to a, an IP in Japan and it didn't make sense. Did you finally manage how did it that? Yeah, so basically it's not that they managed to change the IP, it's just from the HTTP traffic, that if you look at it, it looks uh, legitimate, but like if you, if you dig a bit deeper and you, you see where it's actually connecting, uh, it, it goes through other routes, so. Okay, any other question? Yes, over there in front. The mic is coming. I'm not sure if I missed it, but what was the what was the uh, the end goal for the uh, for the group by targeting the gambling industry? We were expecting this question. Uh, you are talking about the motivation of the group, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was also uh, have this problem to trying to figure out like what was what is their motivation so so far uh, we think that uh, in china there is a uh, yeah so it's basically it's known that china is uh, 
Yeah, cracking but, down on the gambling industry, and they try and they try to. And during the, um, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, uh, the gambling uh, industry or online gambling industry uh, grew up like like crazy. So they try to uh, do as much as they can to uh, to disrupt disrupt their, their 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 yeah their work. And they, they also have uh, financial motivation. Obviously, there is money in this industry. So it's both uh, like political and... Uh, uh, the, the, sorry. <laughs> so the, we, we think there is a... Uh, I would rather say it's espionage to disrupt really online gambling industries in, the, in other countries. So it was not the gamblers who was losing money? Sorry? It was not the gamblers? No. That was losing money or being targeted. With yes, it was the uh, the, the gambling industry, online gambling industry. Yeah, like in some cases, they they even use uh, uh, ransomware or something like that to to then uh, ransom the the companies. Yeah, so there are many uh, many ways where where it can can go.